Hi, in this video I'm going to take you through our solar stats and Tesla Powerwall performance for January 2020. Alright, stay tuned. Hi, John here. If this is your first time here and you're interested in Tesla Powerwall, Solar PV, Tesla Model 3, Hyundai Kona, that kind of thing, then consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell icon to be notified of new updates as and when I upload them. As said in the intro, in this video I'm going to concentrate on our solar PV stats for January 2020. And generally I run through the setup that we have here. So if you're new here, um, I've done that for the last probably three or four videos just to get component by component so people know um, exactly what we have in our setup. I can imagine for those that are uh, come here regularly, it's probably a little bit tedious now to, to work our way through that each time. So if you are new here and you want to know the details of what we have and what our setup is, I've linked them down below in the description. So have a look down there. It lists all the components and their sizes and all that malarkey. Obviously, if you've got any questions, then drop them down in the comments and I'll pick them up as well. So without further ado, let's crack on and have a look at our performance over January. So we managed a total of 241 kilowatt hours over January in terms of solar production. That's from our six kilowatt array. Well, it's a 6.23 array with a six kilowatt inverter. That is slightly less than our December figure. December was 247. So it we're six kilowatts out from uh, matching that, so very, very close. It worked out on average about 7.8 kilowatts a day in terms of solar production. But it was a bit peaks and troughs, as you'll see when we have a look at the day-by-day -day, um, overview in a, in a little while. But overall, still very happy with that. If we scroll down, and this chart looks at our percentage contribution between the, the power wall Tesla Powerwall 2 and solar PV to our overall self power. And our Tesla Powerwall is set in cost saving mode, which means that it's targeted for keeping down the grid pull during peak time. So during off peak, which is a four hour period overnight, it will charge uh, fully, typically at this time of year, and then use that power to then run the house during the peak. So that's really what we're looking at in terms of our self power. So the contribution of the two, the PV system contributed 6% to our total self power and the power wall did a slightly larger 43% contribution to our overall self power. So almost 50% self power if you add the two together, 49 if you want to be accurate. And comparing that against December is actually quite a bit better. The solar is fairly comparable, 5% versus 6%, December to January. But the power wall did a lot better in January than it did in December. So it achieved 39% in December, whereas it did 43% in January. And the reason for that difference will be a reduced pull from the grid. So we actually used less electricity. Um, so obviously then perform better as a result. So that's that. This chart, as you'll see, is how we split the power wall. It looks at the split of the power wall between peak and off peak. So how well it did during that peak period and the off peak period. We would expect, because it's uh, based on cost saving, that it'll do much better during the peak period, which is shown in red in this chart, than the green period. So it's fairly consistent in terms of how it's achieved in the last four months. In January, it did 73%. It managed to basically power the house for 73% of our peak period. And in our off-peak period, as would have expected, uh, it did zero, which it has done for the last three months. So it concentrates its efforts on the peak period, hence the cost-saving approach. So that's all fine and dandy. Let's move along and have a look at the power wall in and out. So what we put in versus what we got out. 
And uh, when I configured this chart, I thought it was wrong because it's almost identical to the December figures. So we put in to the power wall 509 kilowatts and we pulled out 453 kilowatts. And that works out as a round trip efficiency of 89%. And that's almost identical to the December stats, uh, which is quite interesting. Um, which is why when I looked at it, I thought, hang on a minute, this is wrong. But I double checked here and it is actually correct. So that's good. Um, all working well there with the power wall. Really pleased with that. If we skip along and look at our, uh, where should we go now? What do you fancy? PV year on year or day by day for the month? Vote now. <laughs> I'll vote for you. We'll do PVP for the year. So let's have a look. January. This looks back to January 2012. So 2012 to through to 2020 inclusive. What was the total production of solar for each for each month during those years? In January, as we know, it's 241 kilowatts, which is obviously miles apart from anything else that's listed on the chart there, because in October we had the additional array added and that's captured here in the January total, but none of the other previous January totals. And the new array added 90 kilowatts, 89.76 if you want to be precise, so call it 90 kilowatts. Um, to our overall total. So if we take 90 kilowatts off that 241, would leave us with, well, 151. And you then can see that's probably a little bit more consistent with what we would have expected for, for January. So having the, the additional array obviously has a major impact on our totals. I'm really interested to see what happens in February because February last year was a bumper month for us in terms of solar production. There's one week where we produced 100 kilowatts. <laughs> it was like 20 kilowatts a day, ding, 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 sun beating in. Um, so uh, yes, we need to see how we get on with that, but uh, more of that next month. Something to look forward to as always. And uh, we're gonna skip along then, won't we? Look at the day by day. Uh, if you've come here before, you'll know I don't go through it in detail. I just sort of pick out the highlights. If you wanna go through it in detail, then just pause the video and have a a mooch through it. There's four data sets on this and the key or the legend is around blue being our house usage in kilowatts. The yellow is solar generation. Our export is shown in orange and what we've imported from the grid is shown in red. And if you look at the yellow, which is probably the, the key one that we're interested in in terms of solar performance, we had a few days where we were near or above the 20s. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven days out of the 31 days. Most days we had some generation. There were a few days where it was pitifully poor, like sort of 700 watts. So yeah, it was a day of extremes as you know the winter typically is here in the UK. But yeah, 700 watts is our lowest value. That was a very gray <laughs> January day. If we move on and have a look at our averages. So this particular chart looks at our monthly average uh, pull from the grid and house usage. And for January, it dropped from December. The blue line is our house usage and the red is what we actually pull from the grid. So 37.7 was our average house usage on a daily basis. And from that 35 came from the grid, which is better than December, where it was 44, um, but comparable to November. So I would suspect that will hopefully now start to creep down as we uh, move into slightly longer days little bit more sunshine we're certainly noticing that now that uh, the days are lengthening and we're getting a little bit more sun or potential for sunshine in terms of daylight hours if we move on and have a look at our monthly grid usage we have two charts here one that tracks what we send to the grid in terms of excess um, production and then what we actually pull from the grid 
So in January, we sent 15.8 kilowatts out to the grid, which is half of what we sent out in December. So I'm a lot happier with that. Ideally, I'd like it to be zero. And I'll talk more about that in another video because I'm finding that our sort of my energy setup with the cut over of the eddy, which is the master device to pull uh, once it indicates that we're taking as pushing electricity out to the grid isn't um, perfect at the moment. It doesn't seem to trigger all the way for some reason. So I'm doing some recordings on that and looking at our setup around that. So I'll do a, a more in-depth video on that once I uh, have a little bit more information on it and data to share with you. So yeah, 15.8 is good. That was comparable to sort of October and November. What we actually pulled from the grid, I mentioned or alluded to this earlier that we pulled less. So in January, we pulled in 1,089 kilowatt hours from the grid, which is just slightly more than our November value, but about um, 200 kilowatts less than our December. So again, that's sort of tracking down nicely, which is good. So that's our grid usage. I did uh, this month manage to capture the eddy consumption and the cone and the zappy consumption for the uh, the two EVs. So I'll share that with you. Bring that up on screen. So for the eddy that heats our hot water from surplus for the month, we managed to save 3.28 kilowatts, uh, e.g., that the eddy was able to divert 3.28 kilowatts of solar generation into heat our hot water to save us on using electricity to heat it. And so far, since we've had it installed, that's managed to do 76 kilowatts. As I say, I'm not 100% happy with the performance on that because I realise that quite often we get a push out to the grid and the eddy isn't picking up, um, that there is surplus. But as I say, more of that later. From a Zappi perspective, for the EVs, so for January, we pulled in 372 kilowatts from the grid. From solar, we did 58 kilowatts, which brought a total of 431. And of that, 13% so of that was green, so that was solar produced. And then the, the, the resulting um, 87. <laughs> <laughs> to do mental maths there. 87 is uh, from the grid in terms of percentage. So hopefully, if I remember to photograph that each month, I will keep track of that because I know in the last video I said I couldn't be bothered to do it, but uh, I was spurred on to actually go out and photograph it because I actually remembered. So we'll see how we get on. <laughs> so that is our month end performance overall very good uh, really pleased with um, solar i'm really pleased with the additional pv panels that we've got on there certainly making a difference and now i've got the setup done so i can actually see the total production we, because of the fact that we've got an initial array and an add-on array they are two separate solar arrays and two separate inverters and uh, two separate generation meters and two separate readings and they don't converge into one so I have to manually do that every day which I don't mind doing but um, I'm sort of working towards getting that a bit more automated and you know like if I go on holiday um, I'll have to have a rather than have a dog sitter or a cat sitter I'll have to have an EV sitter to <laughs> come in and read the meters um, so I want to avoid that um, so working towards that. So more about that later. Anyway, um, I sh if hopefully that was useful. Let me know how you got on with your PV generation, your solar generation. Drop in the comments below in the normal fashion. And I will see you on the next one, which will be February. All right, take care. Bye.